Hi everyone, I'm Inbal Golan and I'm a visual content specialist at Wix. Today we're going to talk about content strategy for successful sites. As I said, I'm a visual, speci visual content specialist, which basically means that what I do is I cater for all Wix uh, content elements that you guys can put on your websites. It starts from buttons to sections, from presets to apps, and also, of course, templates, which are a unit that holds a lot of elements, content elements in it. So today we're going to focus specifically about templates. Um, and the reason we're going to focus on that is because you and I are doing kind of similar work. Um, you guys create a website for your own clients, and we're creating templates, which are editable uh, websites for our own users. You guys get to work with the real clients, we get to work with imaginary clients, as you would see in a minute. Uh, and, you know, there's a, there are some differences, but as you would see uh, in a moment, y there are a lot of similarities. And I think it's going to be interesting for you to hear how we do it at Wix, and maybe you would learn something. Um, so let's get started. Yeah? Okay, so today we're going to talk about what makes a website a good website. Um, and the answer for that, if you ask me, is that it catches our eyes, meaning it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's attractive, and it makes us look at the website. It tells a story, which basically says that you understand where you land. It's so crucial when you're opening a website, you guys know that. We open a website and sometimes it takes us seconds or even minutes or sometimes we never understand what this website is about. What is it that this company actually does, you know? So if it does tell a good story, then it's understandable and we know what the website is about. And lastly, it makes you do something because a good website has a goal. It wants you as a visitor to do something. It wants you to click on something or to buy something or to subscribe to something. So a good website makes you do something. At the end of the day, if you look at all these parameters, it means that a good website has good content. But what is content? <laughs> so content, a lot of people think about it as the text that you have on a website. But content is not just that. It's not just the text. It's not just the titles and the paragraphs within the website. And it's not just the design or the elements of the, or the images or illustrations that you have in the websites. It's all of it together. Just like the word content, it's what is in the website itself. That is the content of the websites and it's the whole picture together. It's how visuals, meeting written content and they talk to us. So how do we do it and how do we do it at Wix? So I'm gonna share with you the creation process of a template, which as I said before, it's basically the creation process of a website. So we start with an imaginary client. This is the dude, hi dude. And we are thinking about an industry that we want to target as Wix, but of course, you guys have your own client. So let's say that we chose or you chose to work with a startup company, a startup for data solutions, okay? So the first thing that we do is we go to the basics. We start with a definition. Think of, a, think of it as like the ID card of your business, of the business that you're working with, the definitions of the client. We start with a very clear explanation of what the website is about. For this instance, the website is a portfolio for a high-tech company. A lot of the times, clients struggle to say, what is the website about? It's a simple answer, but sometimes a very difficult one. So insist with your client to say, in a very simple line, what is the website? Is it a store? Is it a blog? Even if it has a store and it has a blog, it doesn't necessarily mean this is the main intent. Second, you are thinking about who is the persona. The persona is like a very um, sometimes vague notion, but it's actually kind of simple. The persona is the client itself. 
who is behind the website. This client that I just made up is a young tech savvy company, tech savvy company with 50 employees. Why is it crucial? Why do we want to know who is the company? Because we want the website to present and to represent the company itself. So if it's Amazon or it's Apple, it has one size and one way to express itself. And if it's a very small and very new company, it might want to express itself differently. So we want to specify exactly who is the persona and maybe we have specific uh, you know, um, things that we can say about uh, the client. Next, we're gonna talk about the target audience, what we call here the users of user, the UOU. Um, this is crucial because we want to know who the website is talking to. We want to know who are the site's visitors, which are exactly the site's real client. You know, our client might be the tech company, but their clients are whoever is out there that we want to reach out to and to grab their attention. So we have let's say small businesses looking for analysts or anal analytic solutions, data analysis. And basically, um, we want to uh, specify who are they because they might have specific needs or characteristics that can help us to better decide things about our website. And we want to know what the goals of the websites, the KPIs, key performance indexes. We want to know what the website's supposed to do. We want to know if we want to make the clients of the website, the, the end users, buy something, do something. We want them to subscribe. It might affect where we place certain content. We, we might place something higher or more um, upfront if we want them to do something. And in this case, we want to get new clients and get leads. So for me, it means that I need to have some kind of form in the homepage because I want them to get leads, even if they don't go into the inner pages at all. So it's, it's crucial. Lastly, in the definition part, we want to talk about the business's values. Okay, values sometimes make people choke, you know, what are your values? So sometimes people are struggling with what are my values? But basically values for me means how do I want other people to think of me? And how do I want this company to be perceived by whoever comes to this, client, to this website? So I want to think of it just like I think of what I wear in a job interview. I want to think of it as if I'm wearing like maybe a shirt or like say a tux or like um, a dress or I wear sneakers or I wear high heels, it gives a different message, it tells a different story. So these are the values that I'm trying to uh, present. So the business's values, in this case, I want the other, I mean everyone else that would land on this website to think that this company is innovative, technological, professional, and dynamic. Why is it so important to write these values down? Because at the end, as you would see, we're gonna look at the end result and we're going to check, did we hit it? Are we telling the right story? Are these the values that come from the specific visuals and written content that I just placed? Does it get the right message? Are these the words that come to my mind when I look at the website? Okay. Structure and copy. Okay, some, some of you might write your own content. Some of you might get the content from your clients. And sometimes it's a mixture. Sometimes, sometimes you're getting the content from your client and then you're editing it and you're doing some kind of back and forth. Whatever it is that your method work, uh, work method is, Let's dive into how we do it. So we start with researching, researching websites in the same field. So research for me means to be more knowledgeable about the end result because I wanna know who are my competitors? 
what do they look like, and more importantly, in this section, what is the language and the site structure that they use on their websites? So as you can see, I collected here a couple of websites on the same field. All of them are data analysis. And I'm looking at the titles, how do they place them, where do they place them, and, and what is the language do they, that they use? Do they use a very catchy phrase? Do they use something more uh, like a long text? Do they have blog in their website? Do they use a lot of uh, like a lo a long lines and long text? What does this all mean to me? It gives me more knowledge when I talk to my client. And this is also helps me to shape the website structure. The sitemap is like the skeleton of your website. I know that sometimes you think, you know, let's move on. We know exactly how it's going to be. You know, let's not just waste our time on writing a sitemap. But this is crucial because when you're putting all the elements, all the sitemap in place, you can see a lot of things that sometimes are forgotten when you're just, you know, thinking about them or talking about them and not writing it down. Um, you can see the size of your of the of the website. You can see the, how many pages you have. You can see how many sections you have in each page, and you see what is the menu uh, and what exactly how the menu is connected to the website. What leads to what? Um, if you're giving this to your client, this establishes a better understanding between you and your client and you are more secure that you are talking the same language and you know how the website will, build, will be built, no surprises, you agree on it now, and you can move on to the next phase. Once you have the site structure, you can go even deeper to the actual text. So you have the skeleton, you have the sitemap, the structure, and now you can actually dive in into the title, the subtitle, in the CTA of the button that will be underneath it. And you write everything down. You know how frustrating it is when a client just remembers, oh, haven't I told you that? I do have a lot of more content that I just forgot, and we have to put that into the homepage, and then it ruins everything you did, and you have to find a way to make that work into the design that you already made. So if you ask for the text up front, and you go over it and you show it to the client, that establishes again the connection and understanding before you move on. Obviously, after you've done your homework, you have your research, you know the competitors. So you can ask for more content if you think that it would help the client. And you can ask to reduce content if you think, you know, sometimes you get like files and files of content that you have like no idea where to place, plus it doesn't speak the language of the industry and the client sometimes is not aware of it. Sometimes you don't need so much content on your website and you just need like a teaser, you know, something that would attract the visitors to contact your company. So we have the definitions, we have the ID, we have the structure, we have the copy. Perfect we can move on to the visual research. So remember the research that we've done to get the, the, textual, the, the textual content that you have? Now you can use it to look into visual research as your competitors. You can look at these uh, websites that I just chose, and we see that there is uh, some kind of um, repeating language that we can find between the, the different websites. It might not be obvious, and sometimes it takes a bit of practice and a bit of digging in. But when you see more, not just six, you know, you see dozens of websites. Sometimes we go over thousands of websites or hundreds of websites just to know what is the visual language that this industry uses. And then we specify a specific uh, visual language that repeats itself and we can make a decision. We see that some of the competitors are using a very bright, uh, even white background um, with large text on it, and some of them are using dark elements, and it looks more, you know, uh, spacious or, you know, techy in a way. 
and then we can make a decision. We can come, you can come to your client with this board and show it to them and decide together which direction you're going to go. In this case, we chose the dark version. Obviously, we could have taken uh, the other way. We're going to continue the visual research and we're looking at things that you might not even consider as worth checking. But we're looking everywhere because we want to know that we are on trend and inspiration can come from anywhere. So we go over magazines, we look into art, current art sometimes is very surprising. Social media is a key to any kind of visual uh, research. And we have, you know, the websites that I'm sure that you guys are familiar with, and if not, it's a great opportunity to write them down and to check them out later. We have awards, which collects great sites and also give, that, give them scores. We have Behance, Pinterest, obviously if you renovated your house, you know it. We have Site Inspire, which also holds a tight but very uh, beautiful collection of websites. We have Muesli, and we're looking at Wix templates. You'll be surprised, but we're checking out the, our own word, work, and we see if we have, we can take inspiration from different kind of templates and maybe use it elsewhere. We also have Wix Editor, uh, Editor X templates that serve us as inspiration, and the Editor X showroom that holds a variety of users' work um, that create beautiful websites on Editor X that we love to show and we love to learn from. After all this very thorough research, we decide on a visual direction. Here you can see all kinds of you know, elements that we put together. It's not the website yet. You just can see like a repeating language here, some kind of font or like maybe colors that repeat themselves. And then when we have that, we can go back to the values that we just decided before. And we can look, do they speak that, these values? If I look at the, that mood board, does that mood board speak innovation? Does that mood speak to me as a tech company, professional company, dynamic? When I look at that, does it speak that, these values? And we're finalizing everything. This is the last bit. We're taking the, the visuals with the textual parts. We're putting it together. And we have the final result. This template, which uh, is a very successful template of ours, it's already in the air for about a year and a half. Maybe you guys are familiar with this. You can check this one out. Um, and you can see how it holds all the values and all the research that we've done. And you can see how the site structure and the elements, the visual elements is there, which is probably why it's so successful. It serves our users uh, beautifully. So to conclude, I wanna say that clear content strategy leads to better decisions. I hope you understand and agree with me on that by now and that good content strategy leads to great websites. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to offer you to leave your comments and feedback in this uh, link below. And if you want, I will be very happy to hear about your work method and how you work when you're creating your own websites on Wix. If you're using templates, and if you're not using templates, whatever your work method is, uh, Please use the link that appears below somewhere here and uh, leave your details and our team will get back to you and we'll can talk about it and hear more from you. So thank you very much.